My name is Sam Farley, um, or as many people call me, Sam I am. Um, I have been in a multitude of different careers through my life, but a lot of it was tied to language. So my background is in sign language. I've been a sign language interpreter for about 25 years. Through that time, I've also taught sign language. So I've taught at various colleges throughout California, um, in Northern California and in Southern California. In fact, um, I taught at uh, Yark's, one of his uh, sister colleges, Santiago Canyon College, for a little bit of time. Um, but at one of the colleges I taught at, I was introduced to a product that they used called GoReact. And I said, outstanding, what's GoReact? And so I went through a demonstration and a training, and I was blown away um, on the product and the tools that this allowed me to assess my students in a way that I had always been looking for, but never found a tool. Part of this was because imagine my, my language or my discipline was a visual manual language. And so one, I needed to observe students and it wasn't in a written form, it had to be in a performance form. And so through the years, I had always found ways to, for them to record themselves. I mean, I, you know, VHS tapes, DVDs, USB drives, and then eventually, you know, they could just upload to YouTube. And it was like, oh, great. But giving feedback to the students was always the area I struggled with. I would watch the videos and I would kind of write down collective notes. And then in class, I would give general feedback based on what I saw. But it was hard to give that one-to-one -one type of, of uh, attention some of the students needed. So while I was accomplishing my SLOs for my course, were my students leaving better than when they came in? And yes, they were, but were we maximizing that? And were, is, were there ways I could improve that? Once I adopted GoReact, part of the reason I was so thrilled is I saw the ability to give that meaningful feedback in multiple formats. So being able to give feedback in text or in video or in audio format to, to give and coach my students to what their, their learning was, but then also having that embedded into their video. So students had now the awareness of the feedback. And this was an area that was often missing. And I think this is often missing in all education. We focus so much on the input side, we don't focus on the awareness side as much. And so a lot of students get feedback but do they mentally have the awareness of what they were doing when you wrote down that comment? And do they know how to apply that, that feedback or that comment? And so what GoReact allowed me to do was not only give feedback, but because it was timestamped and embedded in the video, students were seeing what they were doing when I left those comments. So that awareness was now front and center. And when you can partner awareness with that input or that feedback, I saw my student learning outcomes improve three to four times faster in my semester of work, which then allowed me to go farther in the semester. And as a program, we saw better students coming out of our courses, moving on to that next course, progressing through, and then ultimately going into their interpreting training programs and such. So I fell in love with this product and I used it for two years as an instructor before I bumped into a friend of mine at a conference I said, hey, what are you doing? He said, I work for GoReact. And I said, oh, thank you so much. And I told him all the great things about GoReact. And he said, hey, let's go to lunch. And at lunch, he convinced me to join the company. So I joined GoReact about four years ago, which then I left California and moved to Utah, is which we're based. I know everyone here is kind of all over the country, uh, but California is my home. So I'll always have my heart in California but I now live in Utah. And now I work with colleges throughout the country in helping to educate and teach them about the values of performance-based assessment, formative assessment, but really how this elicits the outcomes we're looking for in a, in a more effective way. So with all that said, that's my background and experience with GoReact. I still teach at the local university. I teach at Utah Valley University. And while I still work in the ASL and interpreting program, I also teach in the business uh, college, I teach sales and marketing courses as well, which again, we use GoReact for a lot of those performance-based assessments. So GoReact is used in multiple disciplines, really any course that has a performance element to that, GoReact can be a great addition. So we see it used quite a bit in communication, business, um, foreign or modern languages, 
uh, performing arts, uh, nursing or medical uh, type curriculums that have those skill-based assessments they have to go through. Um, I even have PE teachers using this for yoga and, and teaching breathing techniques. I have math teachers having students work out problems through video so they can pinpoint those exact moments where they can coach students versus as trying to figure out how they got to that answer through this problem process. So it really is used across the board in multiple disciplines. So my goal today is to show you a little bit about GoReact, what it looks like. I will say a few things off the bat. We do integrate with any LMS system. It's an LTI integration. So if you use Canvas, Blackboard, Brightspace, D2L, Moodle, um, you know, we can do an LTI integration. So you can use this directly within your courses that you've created with the LMS system. And with the integration, it creates that single sign-on so students don't have to log into another system. But in some cases, you may not want to integrate it with your LMS course. So you could use it through goreact.com, which is a standalone platform. It's also a secure platform. We're FERPA, COPPA, and HIPAA compliance. We also have our VPAT 508 compliance. Um, we have auto captioning, we have screen reading, all the accessibility requirements that are there and all the security requirements that are there as well. So everything is very safe and secure. Um, and then we do all the video storage of videos so it doesn't take away from your capacities and your current coursework or your LMS system. So it really creates a, a, a great user experience while also bringing with that the accessibility and security that you're looking for. So with that, let me share my screen and I'll go through GoReact a little bit just to show you what it looks like. Um, and notice that what I'm gonna be using is goreact.com. Functionally, everything I show you today will be the same, whether you're in Canvas, Blackboard or goreact.com, it's just the access point, how you get to that will be a little bit different based on your, your coursework. So what you're looking at here is what a, a goreact.com course would look like. I have different assignments that I would create, which is really that placeholder that students are gonna post their videos. Students would then post their videos and you can see I have a number of videos here. Now, all these videos I just pulled off of YouTube. I'm not breaking any purple rules. People posted these publicly on YouTube. So I figure, hey, they're up for grabs. So I pulled these for demonstration purposes, but students can capture these videos using any web enabled camera. So a cell phone, tablet, webcam, laptop, whatever they want to record with, they can record directly into GoReact. They can upload a video to GoReact or they can embed a YouTube video or a Zoom recording into their course or into the assignment as well. So we have a few integrations there that helps them easily be able to post their videos. Once that video is posted, you as an instructor can easily just click on that video. On the left side is where we're gonna watch the video that the student has presented to us. So this allows us to see what we need to see. And I have full control of the video, so you can pause it, you can play it, you can fast forward, rewind it. You can even watch videos in a faster speed. Um, or we have the auto captioning ability if you wanted to have captioning on here. And that works for any video or any audio file that you're listening to. So captioning available if needed. On the right side is where we're gonna focus on that feedback. This is where we wanna now coach our students. So I have multiple tools for that. Let's run through those really quick. In text, which is what most people use, I can just click into the text box down here and start typing, you are doing a great job. Notice the moment I start typing, the video pauses. So my feedback controls the video. I just leave feedback. I don't have to worry about anything else. Just focus on leaving that feedback. When I hit return, the video starts playing again. My comments embedded on the screen, but it's also timestamped at 38 seconds. So again, we know where that comment was left. But every comment I leave is also hyperlinked. Remember that awareness I was talking about? Well, I can click on this comment and the video will jump back to that moment. So this is where we're making that connection between my feedback and the awareness, the student's awareness they need of how to apply that feedback. With text, it's great. Most people, this is what we rely on for communication. But I think in some cases, we rely too much on text communication. Sometimes it helps to have the human element and so again, going with my background in my discipline of sign language, but I do this in my sales courses as well. I love video feedback. I can click on the video icon on here, which then just turns on my webcam. And now I can speak directly to my students by recording that video feedback. This would allow me to now
just speak to my student, coach them just like I'm sitting there with them one-on-one, -on -one, or I can now model or demonstrate to my students. Imagine as a sign language teacher, I can say, hey, you sign name, name. I couldn't have done that with text. And even if I tried to do a text, it, the paragraph would have been this long trying to explain how to move your hands, your palm orientation and whatnot. So just being able to show you sign name, name. Fixing little things like that. And now the student, when they see my feedback, they see my video and what they were doing, they go, oh, I was doing it like this. Okay, now I know to change it. So giving these little feedback notions helps, but I also love video feedback for accommodation. You know, a lot of times you go, oh, good job. Or we give them a thumbs up or a plus mark or whatever. But to click on the video and go, oh, that was awesome. Great job, keep it going. You know, it's those little things that can help students really feel inspired when they have that connection with you. And especially in the online environment we've been in and some will continue to be in, having that connection to your instructors adds validity to our feedback. And I think it has a lot more buy-in from students when, we, when they can see us. So I love video feedback, if you can't tell. But I also know some people don't love video feedback because they don't want to be on camera. So that also means it allows you to do audio feedback so just clicking on the audio button, now I can just record and speak to my student, but I'm not on camera. Maybe it's late at night. You got a glass of wine, you're in your PJs. You don't want to be on camera, but I still want to coach my students. So you can do that audio feedback that you can record. They can then listen to that audio file at that, that moment in their video. So with text, video, and audio, you're able to embed those just by clicking and going. It makes it very simple and easy. And notice to the right of every comment I've made, students can reply back to me and they can also reply back in text in video and in audio formats so this allows us to have the back and forth communication and conversation sometimes we need to dive deeper into that original comment we made and it's all tied to that original timestamp so this allows a lot more of that open communication and coaching that sometimes we need to give the students the, the feedback to improve what we're working on. So while text, video, and audio are what I call your free flowing forms of communication, you can type or say whatever you want. We also have some standardized tools that helps us to really one, support inter reliability, but two, just an easier way to identify those outcomes we're looking for. So in an assignment, I may say, please present and show that you, you know, are competent in these four objectives. And now while I'm watching that video, I can use these markers, these color buttons down here. These are a customizable tool that allow you to create the markers to represent whatever you want. So for example, this first one, the blue one says filler word. This next one says needs eye contact. This next one says good eye contact. So whatever you want these markers to be, now I can just click on this and it tags the video. So if I have these identifiers I'm looking for, these are predetermined identifiers I want to use. I can just click on that to tag the video with those. And again, it's timestamped and, and hyperlinked to that point in the video. So just a quick way to leave that feedback. But when we are working with light courses, maybe it's me and I'm teaching all courses, or we're a team and we're all teaching light courses, this really supports that inner rate reliability when it comes to please identify where you met these objectives and I can use that for my assessment purposes. So it's not, you know, so subjective, it's a lot more standard. And then you can also create rubrics and embed that with the video as well. So we have a rubric builder in Go React, and now I can be filling out a rubric to assess the student as well. And notice the video is still playing. So I can ultimately fill out a rubric. I can leave comments, and use markers all at the same time that's all going to be time stamped in the comment section so there's my leave comment and my other marker there's my rubric and once i do all my grading or post my rubric with the lms integration that grade will pass through to your grade book or it'll then be assigned to the video so you have a lot of different ways to interact with students in that I don't want to go too far into the weeds. There's a lot more that GoReact can do. Um, one last thing I'll show you really quick is we've noticed the need for 
replicating classroom activity in an online environment. And a lot of times, you know, teachers right now are using Zoom, but Zoom is a live, we have to be here, we have to all be together, someone has to start the meeting, we have to do that together. Well, Zoom is great for video conferencing, for that live type of interactive, but we also have a tool in GoReact, it's called a multi-camera tool or group recording that would allow up to nine people to join into a group a recording session that will record and then post that into the assignment. So this allows you to create those group activities where they can have that interaction, maybe a group presentation, a group discussion, um, whatever is needed, but it records and captures that and posts it. So now I can coach the group just like I did the individual. So you have another tool in here where you can create those classroom activities, but it doesn't have to be you know, during class time, they could, you know, connect for homework and, you know, Monday night, let's get together and have a discussion and that will record and post into that, uh, that assignment. So there's a few other tools and bells and whistles in there, but I figure I would pause at this point, answer any questions you have about what we've talked about so far. And if there's anything else you wanted to see with GoReact, um, I can definitely show you that. So let me, I'm going to stop sharing for a minute so that we can talk a little bit more. But please ask any questions you want. If you feel brave enough to unmute yourself, do that. Or I'll open up the chat room. And if you have any questions, you can, you can type them in the chat as well. So any questions? Hi, this is Martha. I just had a question. Um, can students share their screen? If they're doing like a presentation or a PowerPoint presentation, are they able to also share their screen? Yeah, they sure are. There's a when they're recording, there's a little screen share button. They click on that and just like Zoom, you pick which screen you want to share and then it will go the, the their share screen will take the majority of it. Their picture will still be next to it, but they can also turn off their camera. So it's all the screen and then they're voicing over the screen versus having the picture in picture uh, up to them how they want to. But yes, they can do screen sharing um, either on that single camera or even in that group recording they can share screen as well. Um, and so if they were doing a group presentation, they'd be able to share the screen as well. Okay, that's great. Cause I know Canvas has a rich content editor and they're not able to share their screen. I mean, they, they yeah. did what, like what you just presented, but that's that's a feature that was missing. I teach modern languages, I teach Spanish. Oh. So, oh, so yeah, that, yeah. that would be fantastic so that they can do their final or presentations and you know use have different options for that. Oh, definitely. No, and that's the thing. You know, one of the things I love, and actually as a modern language teacher, uh, there's an assignment. I don't want to go too far into the weeds, but we have an assignment called a stimulus assignment that mm -hmm. I love because you can have a video or a, a document, a stimulus prompt that the student watches. And while they're watching that, go right at the same time. I use it for interpreting, for simultaneous interpreting. They watch a video and they interpret, and it's recording them at the same time. So it posts and plays both videos back simultaneously so I can see their performance to that. So I had a lot of activities where we create kind of a speak and respond type of activity. They mm -hmm. hear it, they have to respond in the source language and things like that. So there's a lot of other tools that are really great for um, you know, uh, role play type mm -hmm. activities. So, great question. Other questions? Hey, Sam, uh, this is Michael. Hey, Michael. Okay. Um, I, I love what you are demonstrating. Does it take a lot of whip ban for internet when, when doing large groups? No, I mean, it, it's, our system doesn't, you know, requires very basic connection, um, but the quality of the video will just depend on the individual's connection um, and bandwidth. So I have had students like in that group recording session, I would have students get together to have a discussion. One student was at home on their Wi-Fi and the other one was, you know, in a public place using their data. And I could see the quality was different. You know, one was crystal clear, the other one was a little bit fuzzy. Um, so it will always depend on their connection. It actually doesn't have much to depend on the server of ours. Um, that's always strong and connected. So it will always depend on what their connection speed is. Same with their device, sometimes their browser that they're using, um, but it is all cloud-based. So, you know, it is using the internet if for whatever reason they're in a bad area, like just internet does not work well, they can always record and upload a video. And that way the quality will be a lot better because they're recording without internet and then it just uploads a lot easier. So 
um, there's things that we can't control with, with that, but, uh, but the system itself makes it very, you know, they don't have to have high speed, they can have very minimal, um, the quality will just differ based on what their connection is. Cool, and one last question. What is the preference of a web browser? Personally, uh, you know, our, my, our, our, you can use any browser. Um, I would say the only one I don't think our team recommends is Edge. Um, but I think the whole world doesn't recommend Edge. Um, so, but I personally like Chrome. I think Chrome, you know, is the best at updating, you know, settings and things like that because we have to stay updated on, you know, whatever the current versions are. So that's one of the issues that sometimes students have is something's not working. Well, you have to update your browser. So Chrome, Firefox, Safari, those tend to be pretty standard. Um, and even Edge will work, but I, I know it's a lot more glitchy than, than the others. Um, so you get to use whatever you want. I use Chrome. That's always been my preference. And, you know, if people ask me, I go, yeah, use Chrome. So, cool. but you can use whatever you want. Yeah. Thank no you. Problem. Yes, I love Chrome too. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's one of the nice parts about Gorect is there is nothing to download. There's nothing you have to retain in terms of, you know, of content. It's all stored uh, through the cloud, uh, through, you know, secure servers. So you can access it using a cell phone, a tablet, a webcam. It's very easy to, to get where you need to. Although I do recommend recording wise, you can record anything. But if I'm going to now watch videos and interactive videos, yes, you could do it on a cell phone, but you're also doing it on a screen this big. So I've always suggested at least get a tablet where the screen's a little bit bigger. But if you have a computer, it's even better because you know you just have more space to watch and give feedback. So awesome. Thank you. No problem, no problem. Other questions, concerns, comments? Uh, Sam, so as, as you were speaking and I, and I looked at the picture of the student and, and you're, you're absolutely right, you know, teachers, you, you, you ask them and, and you know, we do grading, you know, whenever we get to it, right? I mean, Saturday night, Sunday night, I can show you stacks of paper and whatnot. So I have a question if, uh, is 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 this just a property of the program that it, that the um, uh, assessment itself or evaluation of student performance uh, could be done only on a recorded piece of video or can it be done live, so to speak? You know, like you have a live. Like I'm, I'm look. I'm, we are talking right now, right? Yeah. And I'm and I'm here. You know, making my comments about what it is that you do or anybody else for that matter. How how would it work if you could comment on that? And yes, we do have a synchronous uh, observation ability. In fact, that was the reason GoREC was created. So GoREC was created by uh, Dr. Bill Baker at, uh, at Brigham Young University in the, in the School of Business. He was looking for ways, because you know we all do this, we have presentation day where students are presenting. And so one, during presentation day, he would watch, he would write notes, and he'd give that feedback to the students. But on top of that, what was everyone else in the class doing? Well, sometimes you pass them out, they have to fill out a piece of paper for every presentation. But again, are they really engaged in that? So he had this idea of if we could put a camera on this presentation and while they're presenting, we can be making comments that will then be tagged into that presentation. So when the student's done, all they have to do is open up the video and all their feedback is, is listed there and I can do it as the professor or I can open it up to peer review so everyone can do that at the same time and it'll all be timestamped. So GoReg has that ability for simultaneous observation. So all you would do is set up a camera. One of the settings when you create your assignment is, is this a live session? So what you would do is click live. Now that creates the ability for you to join a live recording. So the students would be recording you can join that and watch and then give that feedback. Now it was intended for in the class, but because it's set up the way it is, you can join those meetings from anywhere and watch and give that feedback. So I could be doing this presentation here. Everyone on the call could be logging in and making comments to me. Here's the one thing about it. It isn't an, a live interactive tool. It doesn't allow me to, students won't see my comments until after the fact. Because uh -huh. one, we don't want, while students are presenting, all these messages popping up. It's just gonna interrupt them. It's gonna distract from right. what they're right. doing. Um, and in some cases, if they were doing this remote, for example, if I was doing this today, 
I would have no idea if anyone was watching me. I would just trust that someone was watching, someone was leaving comments. So when I was done, I'd open up my video and now all these comments are there like, oh good, someone watched. So it isn't an interactive tool in the sense that, you know, the student and the, the observer can't interact together through that, but it would allow you to observe and leave that feedback live. And so, like I said, we see this used quite a bit when you're on campus in the classroom, you're recording and giving that feedback. Or even if you were in, you know, for example, a simulation lab, you know, you have nursing students who are doing sim lab checkoff. They're in the lab doing it live. You're in a separate room watching and giving that feedback because you don't want your facial expressions, your, you know, your uh, duh, 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 to influence what their performance is. So I do want to be separate, but we're still doing it together. Now, when we're done, let's sit down, pull up that video and all my comments all my rubric and my markers are all going to be there. So now we can go through, but we can also go through it a lot faster. Because what I've seen a lot of times is when people do simultaneous video observation, when they want to review that, one, a lot of them don't have annotation tied with that. So what they do is they sit down and they have to watch the whole presentation together. They pause and now coach them. They go, they pause, they coach them again. Well, this now, because of the hyperlinking of all your comments, they click on a comment, the video jumps that moment, they talk about that. They click on their next comment, it jumps to there. So they can get through these debriefing a lot faster as well. So yes, there is a live element to that. I would say a lot of people use the live element, but more people use GoReact for asynchronous interaction. The nice part about the live feature though is it still stores the video. So now you could go back and do feedback later as well. So once a video is posted, it becomes asynchronous in terms of your interaction. So you can add additional comments or, or uh, engagement with them if needed. Sure, 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 sure. I, I just would like to make uh, go go back uh, just just a few seconds about the comment of student engagement in the process, because uh, if 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 students have access to the same rubric as the instructor does, which they should, and they are able to observe someone else perform along the line of what's re what's expected you know what's 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 on, what's on the rubric then students in that experience alone imagine you know there is 30 students in the class they go through it 29 times you know mm -hmm. there is I, I i just you know there is just no way teacher or anybody would make anyone watch the same video 29 times or repeat the lecture 29 times right 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 and and, and so so I think that that you know again this would underscore the the richness of presentations the variety the uniqueness yet uh giving students and the 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 the, the professor uh, opportunity to really reflect on what it is that what what skills are uh, important what it is that that they can actually observe uh, so going back to the issue of the rubric uh, in canvas you know again that's that's our our uh, uh, tool of choice that we have here uh, that that we use at community colleges is uh, is there any integration can you speak to this at all does does, does it matter yeah. if this canvas you know has its own rubric and then we can export it to go react or how how, how does that work yeah, so with the integration um, to Canvas or to Blackboard or any LMS system, um, we become the submission tool for the assignment. And so what we're telling Canvas is, hey, for this assignment, I'm using this tool. Once you do that, a lot of the, the Canvas settings go away because there's, you know, Canvas is saying, oh, okay, well, if you're going to use them, you don't need all this other. So when it comes to a rubric, you would have to use the go react rubric because that's embedded with the the video and it stays embedded with the video um, the grade will pass through to your grade book but the the rubric and all your feedback stays with the video itself so in some cases you would have to recreate a rubric within the go react uh rubric builder but it's really easy if you especially if you've already created one a lot of it's just copy and pasting and creating that out um, and then you add that to the videos, but you can have different, you know, just like Canvas, you can have different rubrics based on the different assignments you have and such. Um, but really, the integration itself doesn't allow too much, you know, it allows Go React to communicate to, you know, the grade, it allows the, you know, students to access it, but Canvas doesn't communicate really much to us. Canvas is the big fish in the pond. 
So they don't share stuff with us. In fact, the only thing that we are given when we integrate is a student name and an email address. Mm -hmm. uh, that way we have identifiers. So when we pass through a grade, we know who that grade goes to. But we, we have no way to then access your course content. We have no way to access student information. You know, th there's, that's a, a big security point and part of the integration. So Canvas doesn't communicate to us a whole lot, but it allows us to share um, information with them. So that's why we can't use your Canvas rubric because that doesn't communicate to us. It doesn't integrate at that level for an LTI integration. Um, so, but to that point, that's why you would want to create that rubric in Go React. So now I can have it embedded with the, the video. I have had some professors in the past where they, they'll still use their Canvas settings, which is fine. It just is putting it in two places versus having it all in one place. Uh, but everyone wants to manage things differently. So you have the flexibility to do either. Either one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, Marianne has a question specific. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, you did see it. Okay, please. Yeah. So Marianne, we work with over 700 colleges, universities, uh, mainly in the US, but we have a, a number of international clients as well. Um, I can speak to some of the schools I work with, but my area is uh, the West, uh, California, Nevada, Utah. Um, so I don't know your local area. I see you're in University of New England. So my partner, Jessica, who covers you know, the, the Northeast area, um, she could probably speak a little bit more to er schools in your area, but I know I work with UCLA's uh, School of Nursing. I work with um, Cal State Northridge. I work with um, a lot of the Cal States, the CSUs. Uh, um, in Utah, I work with University of Utah, Brigham Young University, um, and Utah State University and all their clinical programs. Um, so I work with a number, but if you want to know any specifics in your area, I I'd probably want to connect you with my partner who works in that area, she knows a lot more of the clients in that area. That'd be good. I work at a, a medical school, College of mm -hmm. Osteopathic Medicine. So uh, I'd be curious to know um, how the tool might have been used by other medical schools. Oh yeah, no, I mean, what we've seen in, and I can speak to some, we've done some case studies um, and then I also you know, speak to how my clients are using it. Traditionally, I mean, skill assessment has always been part of the program. And most of the time it's done live. We, we stand there with the clip clipboard, students are performing the task and we're checking off, you know, making sure that they met, met that assessment. We had the University of West Alabama, uh, that, that's a, a client who uses this. They had adopted this for their nursing program. And what they found was their pass rates actually dropped. And they were a little concerned and we we're like, oh, they go, no, hold on. What they found is doing assessments live, we as educators, we just can't help it sometimes to make those subtle noises. When students are doing their task and you go, <laughs> now they trigger, oh, I'm doing something wrong. And oh, they fix that. And you go, okay, and you check it off. Or the student goes, okay, I'm finished. And the, the evaluator goes, are you sure? And they go, um, no, I'm not sure. Hold on. And oh, so they realized through the live process, there was just still subtle coaching, innocent coaching, but subtle coaching still happening. So when they removed that live element and they did this asynchronously, it was you either did or you didn't do it. So that's where they saw this drop in pass rates. But what they were thrilled about was because now they were doing this video, they gave students the coaching. And when you talk about lear improving learning outcomes, students were seeing what they did, getting the feedback going, ah, oh. it was more applicable and tangible for them to make the changes. So the second round of pass rates went through the roof and they felt so much more confident in students coming out of their program because they, one, had documented not just paper, but they have video evidence of student performance. Um, and, and they were able to use the rubrics and such to still simulate the same process. But in some cases, I think University of Colorado, a professor just gave a webinar for us. He used to, you know, skill assessment used to take two weeks. Now it takes two days for them to get through everyone because they can have students record on their own, 
submit the videos, and now he can get through them so much faster than it used to take doing that one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one through the live. So a bulk of our clinical type practices are using it for that type of record, submit it to me. Now I can go through, give better feedback but still accomplish what I need to in a more streamlined process. And especially in this past year where we weren't, didn't have the ability to go to the clinic or even when we did, it had to be very organized. You know, it was just a headache. Well, some of those, they were able to do a lot from home as well based on the different assessments they could do from home um, with a friend, with a volunteer, a victim in some cases. I don't know if you want to call them that, but um, whatever you want to do, you could record that, post it, and instructors were still able to give them that, that feedback and skill check off. So in whatever case you capture, now that's the other side is, as you know, most clinical programs have sim labs, sim technology that does this, but a lot of it doesn't have the, the coaching or the remote ability. It has to be done on site. Even reviewing video has to be done on site. And even the, the annotation, one, sometimes it allows text, but it might not be timestamped. Every system is a little bit different. So while there's great capture tools, I would always ask my schools I worked with, they go, oh, we use video. I go, outstanding. What do you do with the video? And they go, um, we can watch it. I go, do you watch it? And they go, um, well, we could, but we have to sit down with the student. We have to log in because it's on the server. We have to pull up, so we have to watch it together. I go, so students can't just open up the video and watch themselves. No, no, we have to log in and help them with that. So a lot of times we're doing this already, but we're not doing anything with it because of just how the system is set up. The value of GoReact is it's a cloud-based system. It is secure, FERPA, COPPA, HIPAA compliant. So we can do this, allowing students to review that from home from school, from wherever they need to and getting that feedback they need. So that's where a lot of the clinical programs have, have benefited from GoReact and we've seen a lot going to. It is hard, um, some people, they've already invested a lot of money into different sim labs and such. Luckily, GoReact is pretty cost uh, effective and, and you know for sometimes nominal fees based on what you've paid before, um, you can add this on so it's an addition to what you're already doing. Um, so I, I hope that answers some questions, but yeah, I can it, it just does. Add, uh, I know that we have, you know, three types of kind of skills assessment, you know, in the classroom when they are learning the skill, then it goes on to the sim lab, then it goes into our standardized patient clinic, and right. then they go out to the clinical sites. So I don't think this could be used at the clinical site with actual patients, but there would be, you know, classroom, sim lab, and right. standardized patient clinic applications right. to this. Um, so, you know, there is some, I, I'd be curious to know with our sim lab, um, what tools they have for recording. So that's a question. Uh, I think it's a Lairdow lab. I, I don't know if you're familiar. Heard of them, but yeah, I, I don't know enough about them uh, on what they're talking about. I've heard the name before, but. Yeah. And then uh, what does SLO stand for, by the way? Student Learning Outcome. Okay. So what is this a a group that's formed to, and you're a featured speaker this month. Is that what the slow group is all about? Apparently that Yara can, can speak a little bit more to that. He invited me to this. I was just so, curious because I, yeah, I, was, I became aware of this from a special interest group of other medical colleges. So they uh, gave me the link. And so I'm going, okay, so it's not a SIG special interest group. It's an SLO uh, group. So I didn't know what SLO stood for. Wow. <laughs> It's so yeah, that's a completely different discussion. I'm just so happy you you bring it up. Yeah, because, well, that's okay. Uh, yeah, no, well, another so another another network. <laughs> no, well, actually, it, SLO is not the name of a network. It's a it's a concept on an idea of paying attention to what it is that students learn rather than course completion. So okay. we've been we, we that's that's why the name of it is SLO Talks, so that we can actually talk about student learning outcomes rather than uh, again GPA or, or or transfer rate, you know, things of that nature. So the focus is on what it is that students learn. And Sam is here because he can help us assess that learning, right? Evaluate it. So it's fascinating that it's that's 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 your understanding. I'm just so happy to hear this comment because. Well, I, just... I, I tell you that the contention with the SLO concept has always been that it, we don't call it a competency, 
like everyone on the planet want to understand the word competency versus SLO, people in academia don't always have a clear understanding of what it stands for. So there we go. So again, that's just, you know, sidebar and here. Of, and of so, course, so, the beauty of technology, I'm calling from Maine. In right, the yeah. Middle of the right. afternoon. Right, 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 right. Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, always welcome to join us. Uh, well, thank uh, we'll you. We'll have a number of, 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 of speakers that, again, uh, the idea is for us to, to talk about student learning rather than anything else. So, so certainly thank you. Don't, don't hesitate to send me an email or, or, or just, you know, log in whenever, whenever you can. Uh, going yes, back apparently to I'm the featured speaker of the month. So right, there I'm we invited. go. I got invited to hear, but you don't have to hear Go React every meeting. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Thanks again uh, for the for the comment. I see. Thank you, Marianne. Marianne, if you want to put your um, your email into the the yep, chat, that's what I'm I'll doing. Have, I'll have my colleague uh, Jessica reach out to you, and she can help you understand a little bit more other people who are using in that area. All right. All right. And Julie had a question: Do licenses go with specific student and faculty accounts, or do they float so they can be used by different people at different times? Um, so one of the things, our, our licensing is pretty flexible, but it is based on uh, student usage. So you can have as many faculty as you want. Faculty doesn't really pay, uh, play a part of our licensing. We do look at unique users. And part of that comes to security. Um, they have to create an account or an account through the LMS system is created for them, but everyone has an individual account. It's not a shared account. And that just has a lot to do with the security purposes we don't want. Um, student videos to just be openly observed by anyone. Um, so we look at the volume of students who are using it. And normally we look at it on an annual basis, uh, but we then customize your license to your need. So in some cases, you may want this available for the whole campus, or in other cases, you may say, wow, this is great for our nursing program, for our education program, for our public speaking program. We just want to use it for those that group of people we can customize a license just for that. Um, and then we either activate it at the enterprise level for everyone, or we can activate individual teachers. So any students under their account would have access to that. Um, I will just throw out, we do have a student pay model as well, uh, where you can set this up for your courses and then students would join the course and they would pay to use GoReact for the course like you would in a textbook. Um, so there's that option as well. There is no cost to the university at that point. Um, students are bearing that cost. But in some cases, one, if we don't want to pass that cost on to students, uh, we don't want to do that. And on the licensing side, we have a lot more flexibility to honor you know, volume discounts and things like that. So I can always connect you and I'm going to give everyone all my contact information. I can always connect you with your local represent, representative if you want to have more talks about that and they can give you a better idea of what that price would look like. Um, but pricing for GoReact, just to give you ballpark, the highest point you ever pay would be $56.50 per student. But that is on a very small scale and that is annual unlimited use. They can use it in as many courses as you want type thing. But based on volume, that price could come as low as $2 per student. Um, but that's got to be a pretty large volume of, of individuals. So it just depends on what that volume looks like. So there's a pretty broad scale. That's why we don't have a standard pricing post on our website, because it depends how you're going to use it and, and we can customize our pricing for you. So, um, so yes, please, um, I'll, I'll give all my contact information. And if you want more information about licensing, um, I can get you in touch with your local representative. At the same time, if you just want uh, uh, more questions and more, how can we use this? Or I want to know who else is using this in my territory, I can get you in touch with your local representative for that as well. All right, anybody else? We okay? Uh, Sam, so I, I do have a question. You spoke quite a bit about the uh, we, uh, I, I think this is a, a very uh, good, good, good thing that you have going there. It's a, it's a huge plus in terms of time-saving measures. Mm -hmm. as, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, as faculty, we grab student work, whatever it happens to be. There comes Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We kind of like, you know, do it. Uh, and, it, and, it and it happens and, and we all often feel overwhelmed by the volume. If, if you could please speak to the, to the fact, uh, to, to this time 
management aspect of your of your, of your product. And then if you could perhaps latch on to the idea of a formative versus summative assessment, that assessment that happens throughout the semester on a regular intervals. I mean, you know, with your product, you can practically have it daily, right? If you want it. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, which is, you know, again, that's, that's what I mean, as, as faculty, that's what we do, right? We ask questions, we probe for understanding pretty much all the time. If right. you could please speak to those, those, those notions for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So the first side is in just terms of management. I mean, a lot of this, we as instructors know that we, we put this on ourselves often. You know, I, I give all this homework assignment and often we're grading homework going, why am I giving this assignment? Why I hate grading this, but we're the ones who gave it to them. So we're doing it to ourselves. Um, video is that same is that same thing is one, if I'm giving a video assignment, I am intending to watch and give feedback to students. So things to think about is how long, you know, time limits. You know, if I do a, a speech and go, hey, I want you to do a presentation, but I don't give them a time limit, I made this mistake once. Most of my students, I thought, oh, no, one, everyone's going to do a, a five minute presentation. But I had one student do a 56 minute presentation because I didn't put a time limit. And by golly, I had to watch the whole thing because I committed to it. Um, I learned from that point, time limits, set time limit. Um, so one, when I'm managing my, my caseload in terms of the observation and feedback, I want to make sure I have that expectation so I can manage my time that way. Another advantage I love about GoRect is I can watch videos in a faster speed. So you can increase, like kind of like you listen to podcasts, I can increase the speed a little bit more. So you can do that to videos as well. So I, normally I watch videos always in at least 1.5 speed. My sign language videos, especially for my early students, I watched it in two times speed because now they're signing at a, a speed I can see uh, a lot easier. I'm used to that speed. Um, so that allows me some tools within GoReact to get through those faster. But ultimately what I found is I, you know, what I talked about before, when I see learning outcomes improving faster, I may be investing a little bit more time in the early parts of the semester because the, the, we're, we're just starting this coaching process through this subject. But because they're picking that up faster, I'm not spending as much time later on. So my grading gets a lot faster. In fact, in my later assignments, a lot of times I'm just spot checking. Mm -hmm. But one thing that is above anything else is I start to add the element of self-assessment. I have students post their video. Now you go back in, you watch the video. And based on what you've learned of what I look for, now you give yourself feedback. And so when it comes to that self-reflection where they can annotate and go, oh, I should have done this, I should have done this. What I found by doing that is they were catching everything I would have caught. And then sometimes they're even more critical of themselves. So they're catching more than I would have caught because I'm more forgiving. They were more critical. So a lot of times I wasn't saying, yeah, but also think of this, I was thinking, actually, you're doing a great job. Don't be too hard on yourself. You know, keep it going type thing. I'm, I'm talking them off the cliff. They're thinking, oh, I, I, this is awful. I'm like, no, it's not awful. You're doing a great job. So that ability for that self-assessment, at the same time, Go React is secure. So the default setting is private. Only you and the students see the video and the feedback. But some assignments you can then open up to peer review. So now peers can coach each other. Peers can give each other feedback as well. So when it comes to timing, that's how you have to look at what are my objectives? What are my time commitments? And how can I manage that? But then as we go through the semester, let's start to incorporate these other pieces. And because I invested the time here, it really makes later in the course, you're fi you'll find yourself doing a lot less than you did at the beginning. Where in the past, you were doing that amount of assessment throughout the course because students just weren't picking it up. They weren't catching it. They're doing the same mistakes over and over and over again. Well, now they're catching those things a lot faster so we can be more effective. When it comes to, you know, different, you know, formative versus, uh, you know, um, subjective. Summative, summative. Uh -huh. Yeah, summative. This is where we can, one, I love peer review for that, but I love the ability to set those standards. Like you mentioned, I could do a video every week. But am I really able to gauge those changes with that much? Or can I have a video here, two weeks later, a video, mid-semester? And now the great part about GoRect is all those videos are stored. 
So now students, what I have students do a lot in my classes is in their, in their last video, I say, hey, go back and watch your first video. Mm. Watch what you did in that first video and now watch this video. And when you talk about seeing improvement, I see it, I love doing it. I go and I watch, in some ways I download the first video and so I can watch them together in the same space. Um, but giving students that ability as well to watch the first video versus the last video, they see that progression. They see the, the changes they've made and how much more they've improved. And for some, you know, we have two types of change. We have evolutionary change and we have revolutionary change. Revolutionary change is something we all went through last year when the whole world went online. We had to go online overnight. So everything changed, you know, at the snap of a finger. But evolutionary change is what we're more familiar with. And this is what's harder for us to recognize the change is because we are with that. How many of us look in the mirror every day and we don't see any change? But then you look at a, a picture from a year ago and you go, oh my goodness, I have gained a lot of weight. That's what I did this year. I gained a lot of weight this year, but I didn't see that because I looked at it every day. So I think when we can separate those performance elements out more and make it more of, and then set the standards for the outcomes based on where we're at through the progression, we can see with that video evidence what that assessment looks like and where the improvements have been made. And using those rubrics, what I love is I use the same rubric throughout the course. So now we also have the rubric that is showing us the scores on, you know, on the improvement as well. So that video to me gives you so much more because other than that, all I have is scores to look at. And, right. and when I look at just numbers, that tells me part of the story. It doesn't give me the whole story. Right. Right. So when we can incorporate more video observation into our courses, even in courses where you never use video before, if this is something you could start to say, you know what, I need to bring that awareness more to my students. Video is such a great tool. And the nicest part about it, everyone has a video camera now. Right. You know, there's no excuse. It used to be we only had one camcorder and everyone had to take turns checking it out of the library. Well, now everyone has one in their pocket. And every once in a while you have someone who doesn't, but normally there are resources on campus to still record uh, when needed. So there, there's very few times I've ever had a student who didn't have the ability to record. Um, and we've always found a way for them to get uh, things submitted. So for the most part, I hope that answers some of the, the questions uh, that you had there. Sure, sure. So so again, uh, since, since you mentioned, uh, because you, you, you seem to be uh, really telling us more and more a little bit at a time. And, you know, the more you talk, the more at all I am as to what it is that you can do. But the, the question that I would have then is what about teacher training, you know, so that, um, uh, you know, you, you can't just kind of like, you know, drop the product. I mean, I guess you could, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, right? Yeah. It's just kind of like, you know, okay, so wh where is the support for, for uh, where, where, where could faculty get those ideas from? Yeah, great, great question. So we have a number of, of support means, one of that being our, our customer support team. So when you license Go React, we, we do have a support team who works with you. Um, we, we do that on two sides. We do have the automated, you know, the tutorials, the, the training modules to, that you can go through. Those are more self-paced, do on your own time. But we also have, you know, if needed, we can do Zoom meetings with your department to do live training. Um, and a lot of that is just to get things off the ground. The not, and it sounds weird when I say this because I work for the company, but let, let me take the Go React hat off and put the instructor hat on. Go React is easy. And it's not just easy for me, it's easy for my students. And this is something I loved even before I worked for the company. I didn't have students that had problems or issues, they weren't complaining. And even today, all my students say, they, you know, when I do my evaluation, they go, thank you for using an easy product. Every class I have, I'm having to learn something else. This was so easy to use. I wish more classes used it. And I go, great, tell your teachers. But that's now that I have my Go React hat on. But with my instructor hat on, I love the ease of it. It's very intuitive and friendly system. So once you are trained on how to use it, we not only have, on addition to that, tutorials and, and a website that has a number of, of tools there, 
We also have uh, weekly webinars and blogs that go out from our marketing team, um, sharing ideas, learn, uh, learn behaviors from other colleagues and schools on ways they're using GoReact um, in their different disciplines. So you can always attend any of those you want. But naturally, I have now been using GoReact as an instructor for six years. Every semester, I'm still finding new ways to use it. I go, you know, but I started with the basic. So I'm not gonna drink from the fire hose. I'm gonna drink from the drinking fountain and I'm just gonna slowly keep taking it in as time goes. So a lot of times I, that's why I, you know, I appreciate we're talking cause you're, you're like, oh wait, there's more, there's more. I don't wanna throw everything at you cause then it starts to feel overwhelming. Right. Oh, you know, in some ways your mind will be your, your, your worst enemy. Cause you're thinking I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. Start with just some basics, mm -hmm. you know, let's, let's start but you will naturally progress that evolutionary change of different ways you can use GoReact will start to show up. And one semester to the next semester will be different on how right. you use that and, and adding more tools. So we have all the support behind to help you with that. But most of what you're gonna learn is what you just figure out on your own. Again, how it applies to your curriculum. Because even right. if I talk about communications, every communication teacher I've talked to even though they have all about the same outcome, you know, objectives, everyone goes about it differently. So GoReact is the tool that allows you to customize how you can still accomplish that. And I've seen, I've seen so many different ways GoReact is being used. So, you know, your account executive, your customer success manager, they can always share with you different ideas, things like that. Um, but yes, all of that's part of GoReact. We, we never just drop it on your lap and go, all right, good luck. See right, you later. Right, right, right. We're we're always part of that, and you can reach out to us anytime for you know for meetings for additional things. Uh, we're, we we want you to be successful. It's one thing I appreciate about our CEO. Our CEO is very student focused. Um, mm -hmm. He from the beginning he wants this in in the students' lives because he has seen the value of this in in creating better student and better learning outcomes. And so he has always been very supportive in whatever we need to do to help you be successful. Uh, we're going to be there along the way. So since you mentioned training, you know, what comes to mind is actually professional development of faculty. You know, this is an area that we are, we just don't, don't talk enough about. But when you think about it, you know, specifically in teacher education programs, you know, uh, maybe you come into colleges, uh, we, we, we do have some teacher preparation courses. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, at least in California, there is, you know, four year universities who, who, um, who have huge departments devoted to this. Oh, yeah. So, so um, that would probably be, you know, just, just of great significance for, for us as professionals to, to ensure our professional growth. Yeah, it's always, it's always nervous when you start to turn the camera on yourself. Uh, right, people right. get nervous there, but you're right. Um, and I had one of my departments did this um, at the college that we use GoReact because every month or every month or once a you know once every other month my chair would want to come observe me you right. know we would want to do that observation but i taught night courses they were during the day you know it was always and so even when they would finally make it and they come they'd sit there they would you know write notes and then at some point they would leave i wouldn't even see that they left and sure enough a week later i get an email that said hey i really enjoyed your class you're doing a great job keep it up and i go can I get more? Like, how can I improve with that? You know, so can I get more? So what we did was we, I would just set up my cell phone at the back of the class and I would record one of my teaching segments and then I would post that into GoReact. So now I became the student and now my chair could watch my, v, my video and they could give me feedback. And then what we started doing as our department meetings is we'd watch some of these videos together and we'd give each other feedback as well. So we definitely use GoReact for professional development and we're seeing it more and more used in professional development, a little bit more outside the, the traditional collegiate area. We do work a lot with teacher education um, where students are doing their remote teaching segments, student teaching. But now we see districts adopting GoReact for induction programs. You know, Once that we've hired, now they have that two year induction time where they need that professional development. But even past that, we want to continue to develop our teachers and, and give them the feedback they need. So I've seen it adopted more at the K through 12 level than I have on a professional development side from the, the higher ed level, but it is starting to be used a little bit more and more um, where now the teacher is the student 
and, and we're turning that camera on ourselves. So yes, Go React has those options, um, which is funny because we see how powerful it is for our students. But then when we turn the camera on ourselves, like, ooh, I don't want to be, I don't want the camera on me. Right, right, right. But right. if you look at it truly on a, a development, this is a development tool and I can better myself, it makes it a little bit easier uh, to, to swallow. Sure, sure. Just, just a last question about training specifically. What about student training? You, you did mention that the uh, Go React is very easy. So, so yeah. I suppose there isn't really much of a learning curve there. But, but no, yeah, most of our, yeah, most of our student training is is through, um, you know, through our tutorials on our website. Because um, really, for students, it's how to post a video. Okay. Um, but again, it's you know when they open up their assignment, there's a button that says start assignment. So they click that, they say, do you want to record or upload? You click record, it opens up your camera, you record. So the, there's tutorials for students on how to share your screen, how to, how to do this, how to do that. Most of the time our customer su uh, success team doesn't work with students. We work with faculty more because really the learning is, how are you going to use GoReact? Sure. You know, what assignment type do you want to use? How are you going to build your rubric? How are you gonna... So that's where a lot of our training is spent. When it comes to students presenting, most of them, I mean, they're teaching me how to do it because they're right. doing this every day on social media and stuff. So there are training resources on our website for students, but we, we've never had to invest time in giving live training to students and even faculty. I've been using in my courses. I've never, I work for the company and I never trained my students on how to use GoReact. I just put the link to the, the resource page and, you know, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they all know how to do it. Every once in a while, I have a student goes, I, I can't figure it out. Great, let's talk. Boom, they're good to go. So, so we have the resources if needed.